Hi everyone, welcome to our team Zoom meeting tonight. We're excited to have you here and we're excited to hear from our special guest, Angie Peterson from North Carolina. She's one of the top coaches on our team and has been with our team since the beginning of um, January 2012. So, well, the beginning of the year, 2012. So we're excited to have her here and to hear um, some tips on how to grow your business on Facebook and just some basics of Facebook marketing. So welcome, Angie. Go ahead. Thanks, Shannon. Um, well, I've been thinking a lot about it because for me, um, I was not a Facebook user. <laughs> so it was kind of a brand new thing for me. Um, kind of a little bit of background. When it came to Facebook, I had an account. I got on maybe once every two months and just kind of checked up on my friends to see what was going on and would read what other people posted. I might post a picture of my kids or something like that, but really wasn't really into it. My mom would tell me things all the time. Oh, did you see that so-and-so put this on Facebook? And I was like, no, I don't really go on Facebook. And so I was kind of really out of the Facebook thing. Um, then uh, I became a coach about two years ago. And when that happened, um, everything changed with Facebook. I knew that I wanted to coach, but I'm a very shy person. And that's probably why I didn't use Facebook a lot before. I had a hard time putting myself out there um, thinking, you know, I didn't know what to post. I didn't know... Um, you know what people would be interested in and um, kind of was really hesitant to put things out there in public and um, but then when I became a coach I kind of realized that if I wanted to coach the best way for me to do it was on Facebook and through social media because I do have such a hard time just going up to some random person or even a person I know and just talking about um, Beachbody and being a coach and I thought oh that's never gonna happen so I knew that for me my personality I would have to do it um, at home on Facebook or other social media if that was gonna happen and so I kind of took an about face and all of a sudden was having to learn Facebook from scratch learn how to even just the basics of using it um, what to do on there and really looked at Facebook as a tool instead of just like another fun thing that you can do um, and like I said, I had to use, uh, learn how to, to use it from the beginning and knew that that's what I wanted to do to build my business. And so it's kind of everything I'm going to tell you is just a learning process of what I've learned over the past two years. Um, and kind of from the perspective of someone that was totally ignorant from the beginning on what to do. Um, and I was kind of the person that would like get friend requests from like my friends, husbands and think that's weird. I don't want to friend them. And now I kind of look at everyone as a potential customer. So I get a friend request and I think, Oh sure. You know, I want to be friends with everybody. And so it's funny how your, your perspective changes. But the, the main thing that I wanted to, to tell you guys today was to um, my main tip. Sorry. Forgot to turn my phone on. Very bright. Um, my main tip is to live your life out loud, um, and that's like I said, something I've really had to learn. Um, you might feel like uh, when it comes to coaching, it's kind of when you're when you're starting, you feel so overwhelmed. There's so many things that you need to learn, so many things that you can do with this business that you could really sit down and do it for 24 hours a day and still feel like you had stuff to do. And so when it comes to that, um, at first it can be very overwhelming. You don't know what to post. Um, you feel like you don't have the time to maybe come up with these really cool elaborate uh, you know posts that's going to get people's attention and um, the one thing that I really learned is that you don't necessarily have to come up with all these original things um, and sit there and come up with beautiful things that you can post you can just post what you're already doing um, and so that's what when I say live your life out loud that's my the main thing that I try to do is post what I'm already doing. So you talk about your workouts, you talk about drinking Shakeology, you talk about eating healthy, um, any recipes that you find along the way, and just things that you're already doing. And then you just kind of throw it on Facebook or throw it on Twitter or wh whatever that you're trying to do um, because you, number one, are already doing it. And it's really only takes a couple more seconds out of your day. Number two, then you're showing people what you're doing. Um, one thing that I have learned is that when you watch, um, you know, the top Beachbody coaches, um, like I you like a lot of the pages of Janelle Summers and um, Josh Spencer and all these really big coaches, they talk about what they're doing. It's not just, hey, buy this, do this, do, you know, preaching. They're actually practicing what they're preaching. And so um, that's one thing that I've really noticed that people really respond to. Um, it's not just me saying, 
hey, you know, work out, work out, work out. I'm saying, hey, look, I'm working out, do it with me. And so it's kind of like we're doing it together instead of me just telling them to do it. Um, and that really seems to work really well as far as Facebook goes because um, people obviously who want your help want to know that you've done it yourself. They don't want someone just telling them what to do that's never actually done it themselves because they haven't been in their shoes, they don't understand how hard it can be. Um, and they do like to see that you're a real person and obviously real people have real struggles. And so um, that's another thing that I've had some coaches um, ask me. They say, you know, I'm having a really bad day. I don't want to work out. Should I just like suck it up and put a big smile on my face and pretend like everything's rosy and dandy and just post how great it was and how it was so fun and how I really wanted to work out this morning when I woke up. And I'm like, no, not necessarily. I mean, you'll have days like that, but you'll also have days where you wake up and you didn't get very good sleep and you were really grumpy and you, you know, your body sore or whatever it is. And it's really good to talk about that because the average person experiences that. And so they can relate. Um, so being able to live your life out loud and tell, and, you know, be really honest, tell really what's going on and, um, can really get account of what's going on in your life. Um, one thing about when it comes to operating a business like this and being a coach is if you don't, um, tell people what you're doing, they're not going to know. Um, if you don't, if you open up a business, say like a, a regular business with a store and you don't put your sign out front and you don't turn on the lights and you don't open your doors for business and kind of tell everybody about it, they will not know. They won't know to come to you. They won't know what's going on. And obviously you're not going to be very successful. But if you do turn on your lights, you do put your sign up, you do tell everybody about it, you welcome people, you talk to people about it, then they're going to know and they're going to come and you will be successful. And it's the same thing with this business. Even though you're doing it out of your home, on your laptop, in your bedroom, it's the same thing. You have to tell people what you're doing in order for them to know that that's what's going on. Um, I had a moment where when P90X3 first came out, um, you know, all the other coaches were posting about it and... Um, I can't remember what was going on. I think my all um, of my children were throwing up or something. It was like all, it was a really crazy day, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I don't really want to post about this. First of all, you know, I've got all this going on, blah 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 blah. But I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna put it put it up. Um, and I also feel kind of hesitant still about like putting things on my personal profile about you know workouts that are coming out, thinking, oh, people are just gonna feel like I'm you know salesy, and I don't like that. Um, but I, I kind of put up a picture of myself being excited and saying, hey, P90X3 just came out. I'm so excited to order it. And that's all I said. I didn't say buy P90X3 from me or you know, this workout just came out. It will change your life. You know, kind of, I just kind of shared what I was doing and being excited about it because I really was excited and I really did want to order it. Um, but you know, I, I took the time and I did it. And I was amazed because I, I had somebody – um, at church that I talked to just in passing, never really sat down and talked to her. And she said, hey, I just ordered T25 last week just off the internet, and I sent it back when I saw your post, and now I want to buy the P90X3 and Shakeology through you. And I was like, whoa! So it's just amazing how things will happen when you do share it, when you do post about it, even if it's not convenient necessarily, or you're scared to put it up, you don't know how people respond, you know, kind of do it in a way that that you, you're just excited about it and you're just sharing. I think that's the biggest thing. Instead of trying to sell things, you just want to share things. And people will come to you and they'll ask about it. And they'll wonder about it. And they'll ask, you know, how, how do you like that workout? Or what does Shakeology really taste like? Can I try it? Because instead of you giving the persona of trying to sell something, you're, you're trying to share it. And I think people can really pick up on that and know the big difference between that. Um, so when it comes to practicing what you preach, um, you have to show people that you are willing to put in the work and that you're willing to help them. Um, and you have to share it not only on your Facebook page, but also on your personal profile. And that's something that um, I was really hesitant to do. Like I said, I don't want to come off as being salesy because that's not me at all. Um, and I was at first just posting on my, my page thinking, you know, anything beach body, I'm just going to put on my page and I'm going to talk about myself on my personal profile. And I did that for a long time. And then I, I kind of came to realize through watching what other coaches were doing that they were posting about their workouts on their personal profile and other things. And it kind of gets people interested. And from there, we see their comp, the people who comment, and then you get them onto your page. And then that's kind of, a, you know, the step that you want to do. So you you do, if you aren't going to post it on your personal profile, then the people who haven't liked your page yet will have no idea what you're doing. And um, it's been kind of interesting because I, I moved in June of this year, right when I started doing this, and the new 
place where I am, even though I didn't move very far, it was a whole new group of people that I was interacting with. And everybody knows, because I've been trying to post on, um, you know, friend all these people on Facebook, even if I've never talked to them, they already all know that I'm into health and fitness. And so when I go to little functions, they're like, oh, don't give that to her. She's really healthy or, you know, or, you know, you want to work out, go talk to her. She's into workouts. And so it's kind of funny how you'll establish, you know, this like persona of being this health and fitness person, even if you necessarily haven't or haven't necessarily, you know, talked about it in person with these people because they are watching you and they do see what you post, even if you don't think that they do. So it's really important how you come across. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is when it comes to posting on Facebook, um, you want to be really interesting and you want to be really engaging. Um, one thing that I've learned when it comes to um, you know, posting things about Beachbody, like when workouts come out or new flavors of Shakeology or something like that, um, there's a lot of people that have liked a lot of different health and fitness pages and you know coaches and they might have seen the same exact picture by the same, you know, a whole bunch of different coaches at the same time on that day. And you want yours to kind of stand out. So instead of post, just reposting, you know, another picture of just the, the bag, you know, or something like that, I've kind of learned that I attach that to a picture of me. So I want to make it personal to me. Um, and that's one thing I did on the, the Black Friday that really worked really well for me. Instead of just posting a picture of the Black Friday deals, I put a picture of myself next to it so it was you know personalized to me and then I tried to make it really engaging and so I tried to take a picture of myself that was a little bit more interesting than just me sitting there smiling and so um, that's really worked well for me to, to you know kind of personalize things the best that I can um, and then make it interesting humor works really well so if you you know if it's in your personality to do it try and you know make it to where it you know, people are going to like laugh or, you know, something that they're going to want to share because if it's just kind of boring, then they're going to be like, eh, and they're going to keep scrolling through. So it needs to stand out. It needs to be engaging to where, you know, it, that people are going to want to share it. And it obviously has to be part of your personality. So if it isn't part of your personality to, you know, make a joke or something like that, then obviously don't do it and fit, fit, figure out another way. But, you know, bright colors, pictures, things like that really help. Um, so after you kind of find people on Facebook and you, you know, you're engaging with people, um, you know, and another really good way of doing it is to ask questions. One of the, my, some of my best posts on my page have been things that I've asked for help. And it's really funny because every time it happens, I think, oh my gosh, I'm getting all these answers. Um, there was one that I did, my first one that I never noticed this happening was about boiled eggs. And it sounds kind of ridiculous, but I had boiled eggs for dinner that day tried to peel them and it totally fell apart. So I took a picture of my destroyed but boiled eggs and I said, what am I doing wrong? This is how I've, I've always boiled eggs. They've never turned out. What do you suggest? And I got like 45 comments about how to boil eggs. With so many different suggestions, it would probably take me a year to try them all. But um, you know, anything like that where you're asking for help, you're asking suggestions, you know, anything that will engage people, people really respond well to. And those one, those posts are, are one of my most um, engaging posts. And then I always follow up with those people say, I send them a message and say, thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate that strategy of boiling eggs. I never thought of sticking them in the oven or whatever it was. And, you know, it, I always say, um, to see more of my posts, please like my page and put a link and kind of ask a question. And so I try to engage people that way. Um, one thing that works really well, my second tip is to offer something that's free. Um, you'll notice that when it comes to anything, um, people are really hesitant to spend money at first. So if all you did is say, hey, I have this great workout, you should buy it. Well, you know, that's not obviously going to happen to for 99% of the people, most, you know, 1% might say, sure, I'll buy it. But the 99% of the rest of the world will say, eh, not right now, or I'm not really interested, or I don't have the money, or whatever it is. And so almost everybody isn't going to want to spend money the first time they meet you, the first time they talk to you, the first time they find you on Facebook. You need to offer something for free. Your page is free, which is great, so you can have great content on your page, um, offer tips and things like that. Um, but one thing that I found um, that works really well is to have a free community, and this is something that we've been trying to teach everybody. Um, and I've had interesting experiences with communities. I started a community by myself when I first became a coach and tried it for about a year. And I would add people, and they wouldn't comment, and I felt like I was talking to myself for so long that I finally closed it. 
I thought, I'm over communities. It, it was so much work, and it, I got nothing out of it. Um, and I was tired of trying to run it by myself. And so I quit. And I didn't do communities for about six months. And then I tried to do the, our um, group community with the rest of the coaches. And that worked okay. But then I found that it was really hard for me to, when it was so big, to find my own customers and figure out what was going on with them. And so I joined, I created a free community with one other coach and that's been great because there's two of us to support of each, support each other and we can take turns posting and it's not all on me. So if I have a busy day and you know, she can get in, go in and comment and it's not quite so stressful. Um, you're also both adding people to the community. And so it's real. it works really well to do it with another coach. Um, somebody that you feel like you can you know, have a good relationship with in order to make that community. But the one stipulation I have when I, when I um, offer this to people, because I'll, like for instance, the, the biggest loser contest that we just started, I had a lot of interest in it. I was talking to a lot of different people. I would have them watch the webinar. And a lot of people said, I can't do this right now, I don't have the money. I say, sure, no problem. I'll put you on the list for the future future Biggest Loser contest since you're interested, and I'll invite you again, but for right now, um, would you like to join my few com free community? And so that gave them a, an opportunity to do something else with me and give them something that they can uh, you know, interact with me, and it's not just leaving them hanging, they can join, um, and it's free. But the one thing that I did say is that in order to join, all you have to do is create a free account on the Beachbody website so that I can officially be your coach, so I can officially help you. It's totally free. There's no obligation to ever buy anything, but it's just a technicality so I can be your coach. And I kind of leave it at that say, just so that they know that you know I want it to be official, I want to be the coach. And if they don't create that free account, I don't add them to the free community. Um, because I've just found that um, in the past, I was adding people to the free community, and there were a couple times where people would eventually buy something, and it wasn't under me. And so if you have that free account, and they do eventually buy something from your posts in the community, um, then they will always be your customer, and then you will get the commission for your hard work, and it's not like you going, wait a minute, that was supposed to be for me, you know? And so um, that works really well for me, to have something that you can offer to people who say no, who don't have the money, who can't do that right now, don't don't want to invest in that at the moment to offer them something else for free. And almost every single time they say yes. Um, and it's a great way to have everyone that's interested in one place so that you can post about upcoming challenge groups or anything like that. And then they'll, they'll see it more likely than they will in the news feed of, of your page. Um, so that works really well uh, to have something that's free. Um, and the great thing about that is that you're establishing that relationship. They're learning what it's like to work with you. They're seeing your posts in the community. Um, and they're, they're seeing that you do provide support. They, you do care about them. You can follow up with them a lot easier if they're all in one place. Um, and they can you know, have something that they can start out with. And so it's not quite so scary to have to invest money in. It's not so scary that they have to invest a lot of time um, to offer that to them. So that works really, really well. Um, so those are my two main points um, that I wanted to bring up when it comes to just the basics of starting things on Facebook. The first one is to live your life out loud, to share what you're already doing. Um, and you know, it, it, and it was something that took a long time for me to kind of suck it up and just say, you know, I'm just going to put myself out there. And you don't have to put, you know, you don't have to be so um, personal to put everything out there. But it does help to say, hey, I'm working out. Hey, I'm eating well. Hey, I've got these things going on. And like I said, each time I do it. I have that like pit in my stomach, like I'm still really scared to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And every single time I've done it, it, I've been amazed with who has been interested, people I never would have thought who would be interested. And um, I've never once put something on there and thought, oh my gosh, I should not have posted about my workout or I should not have posted about Shakeology or whatever it was because, you know, this happened. I've never gotten a negative response publicly on Facebook or anything like that. And so um, I've always been really glad that I do it. And it always really helps build my business. And like I said, people will come out of the woodwork all of a sudden and you'll say, wow, this person was interested and I had no idea. And you would never have known if you hadn't posted it. Um, so live your life out loud. And the second thing is to have something free that you can offer them. And that can be the community. It could be your Facebook page. Um, it could be something else. Um, 
but just having something that they can do with you when they do say no about you know a challenge pack or about a workout or about Shakeology because no doesn't mean no it means not right now and that's something that I've really learned and you'll hear many 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 more no's than you will yeses but it's been amazing to me just throughout the two years that I've been a coach how many people have said no probably like two dozen times before they say yes <laughs> and um, and I have some people that you know you just been amaz amazed to see that they finally do come around eventually um, and they know that if you keep inviting them they'll know that when when you're they're ready that you'll be there and that you're willing to help them so anyway does anyone have any questions or anything to add Angie, do you want to talk about um, what times of day you post on your Facebook pages? Sure. Quick last turn now. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I try to post um, three times a day. I usually, when I schedule my posts, which I haven't been as good of doing lately, but that works the best for me on my Facebook page is to schedule it. Um, I look and see where you can actually look on your your page and I can't remember because I haven't done it for a little while I'd have to look and see but you can look at the stats and see where most people are um, and most of the, my followers are actually like the center part of the United States and so I try to post about um, 10 o'clock um, central time um, about two o'clock and about six o'clock um, because then it's you know about when everyone's gonna be on Facebook but um, I do try to post it at least twice a day on my Facebook page and then try and do at least and I need to do more at least once a day but I try to do two or three on my personal page and when it comes to the personal page I only put business stuff up once a day um, I don't want it to be so much about health and fitness that people are gonna get annoyed and hide me <laughs> and so I talk more about you know what's going on in my personal life my family that kind of thing um, but I do try to like weave it in and so I'll say like here's my kids like eating strawberries with you know mess all over the place or you know so that they see that it's like health and fitness related or something like that but yeah that's about when I try to do it awesome thanks we just have just under 10 minutes left um, does anyone else have any questions for Angie um, okay well I have a couple more questions for you <laughs> <laughs> I'll just ask. Um, so how have you found using your story um, on Facebook? Like besides just posting what you're doing, but you know, sharing more of your story, how has that helped? That's a good question. Um, I think it's one of those things where I was afraid to put it out there. Um, one of the main things I struggle with are health concerns. I have um, some autoimmune diseases I struggle with. And at first it was something very personal to me and I was really hesitant to even talk about it because I was like, oh, you know, these are things I struggle with personally. It's hard to admit to somebody that I can't unscrew a water bottle or, you know, I can't do a push up because I can't bear my own body weight on my hands and things like that. You know, it's very personal. It's very hard to admit to those kind of things. And so at first I wasn't really talking about it. Um, but I found that the more, um, I'm willing to talk about it, the more response I have, even from people who can't necessarily relate to the exact same conditions. I do have a lot of people that follow me who do have, struggle with the exact same things, and it's nice for them to see that they're not the only one in the world that has those kind of problems, but even with just the average mom or average um, person, um, they kind of see that it's nice to, to see the kinds of things I struggle with, and I'm still able to get my workout in, or I'm still able to, to do all these things, even with everything I struggle with, and so, um, and that way it's been really nice to, to you know, put it out there because it, I do get more of a response to be more personal. Um, and like I said before, just being really honest with what's going on. Um, even today I, I was having a really hard day with my joints and didn't want to work out and didn't want to do anything, just kind of want to curl up in a ball and die. And um, but I kind of pushed myself to, you know, stretch and stuff before and, and got it in anyway. And, and I did post about that on my personal page and my Facebook page and kind of just said, you know, this is one of the things I struggle with. This was, you know, a really bad day for me, but I did it anyway. And it's kind of funny because I got a couple personal messages of people going, okay, if you can do it, I can too. I'm ready. And so it's really amazing to me how being willing to put yourself out there makes a big difference. Even if, like I said, for people who can't exactly relate, they still can see that it's difficult and they can do it as well. 
Awesome. Yeah, it's amazing when, um, yeah, when I talk to people and they have excuses, I always look at you and say, look at her. <laughs> you have no <laughs> excuses. So, anyway, it's funny. Um, okay, my last question for you is, so we have a lot of new coaches that are going to watch this and they're just starting out with their business on Facebook. So what, and you've given us a lot of tips, but um, so what's what's your number one, you know, here's my best advice for the new coach starting out. For the new coach. Um, I think just to talk about what it is that you're doing as far as health and fitness goes. Um, I've seen a lot of coaches come and go, mostly go, because they're not willing to put in the time um, and effort. And the thing that I've noticed, there's some coaches like Brianne, who's on the call, it stands out to me, and Lucy, and a lot of other newer coaches who are having a lot of success just right out of the gate because they're talking about it. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. They're posting on their personal page, they're posting, posting on their, their Facebook page what they're doing right from the get-go. Even if they haven't necessarily lost a ton of weight, they're still talking about what they are losing. They're, they're still talking about what they are doing and um, about their journey. And I think that makes the biggest difference. Some, a lot of people feel like in order to be a successful coach, they have they have to have hit their weight goal already. Well, I've been a coach for two years and I still haven't hit my weight, my goal weight because I, well, I had a baby in the middle of it, but um, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to have reached a whole bunch of, you know, personal goals as far as that goes to be successful. You just have to be willing to talk about it and to help other people do it along the way. And um, I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed when it comes to success in this business is being willing to talk about what you're doing because if, and like I said, unless people know what you're doing, they're not going to come to you. And you have to be the go-to person when it comes to health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, Angie. Great advice. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this um, Zoom meeting. We will normally do these on Thursday nights. Um, I'm going out of town tomorrow, so um, just decided to do it the day early. But I'm grateful for Angie and her time. And we will have special guests every week. So we're excited to hear from lots of different coaches on our team. So stay tuned um, Thursday nights and we'll be on Thursday next week. So um, let us know if you have any questions or need anything, but have a great week, everyone. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.